Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try in English. Okay, I mean for the <laughs> for the people not understanding Italian. Uh, well, uh, thank you for to European Alternatives to Sale and to all the organizers. Uh, I'll try to be brief, uh, and uh, I would like to begin making a comparison between two kinds of. Uh, uh, so to say, total mobilization in the Hungarian sense of the word. I mean this strong, uh, almost machinic force of uh, mobilizing populations around uh, fears, around uh, dangers, around... And, and establishing a comparison between the refugee crisis in the sense that still it is being managed uh, by by the, the, the commanding powers in the sense of the fear of and in the sense of uh, adding, adding up more troubles to the European situations and the uh, Occupy cycle, first the Arab revolutions and in particular in, in the European uh, realm, uh, May 15 and, and Greece. But in the case of uh, Spain, uh, we have also a total mobilization, but a total mobilization uh, uh, that uh, is uh, pushed forward by uh, joyful effects, joyful passions, more than uh, fear and hatred. It's been called um, Movimiento de los Indignados in the sense that uh, indignation, outrage, it is, uh, as Spinoza says, said, uh, it is a uh, hate towards uh, those who uh, do harm to those you deem like equals to you. So it has a background of uh, joyful passions, of love. That hate is caused by love and not by fear of alterity. And I think that this is the clue to, in a sense, to the European situation, which kind of uh, total mobilization is created in the Spanish case, it, it is, uh, it, it's been, of course, I, we don't have time for, for going deep into that, but it has to do with at least uh, certain conditions. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the, the hopes uh, betrayed by Zapatero, because we have to take into account the fact that uh, Zapatero won the elections because of the, uh, of the popular reaction to the killings of uh, March uh, 11th and the lies of the Aznar war during the Iraq war. And, and he knew, they knew the socialists, like they have won because of that, because in the three days before the elections, after the killings, there was this first, like, uh, we would say constituent flash mobs organized them by SMA, SM, SMS and emails. There were, there were no social networks still. And that uh, exerted the, the enough pressure enough to uh, give uh, uh, the, the socialism majority. And they knew it, that they, they, they had uh, gained power because of, of this illegitimate or illegal means. No? And you know the 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 the, the, the legacy of the, the the work of on, on civil rights and mostly of the Zapatero uh, of Zapatero government, uh, gay marriage, uh, the so the Ley de Dependencia, which was about uh, care work in the family, and it was like a, a yeah like a, an addition to the welfare state. And, and so on. But on the social level, on the labor uh, level, there was nothing. And then came austerity, and in 2010, uh, the night before uh, saying, I will do, never do any cuts, the day after he <laughs> made the first cut. So it was the end of that hope. And we had an emptiness, a void for a year in which nobody, no social political actor, even the antagonist uh, movements were able to do anything. So we have to take into account this, uh, this, uh, the, the, this power of this potency of the, of the void, of the emptiness in the political and social space. Uh, 
But another condition is the, the development in Spain of uh, the network politics around uh, issues like uh, intellectual property, uh, the internet, etc. The internet, the, the censorship, etc., etc. Peer-to-peer, anti-peer-to-peer laws, and so on. So. Uh, this total mobilization was created by, through the networks, through the social networks. It began through a, a, a demo, May 15, created by a totally new collective, Democracia Real Ya, which for the 90% or 95% of the people there weren't activists before. There were these, um, these uh, becoming poor of the cognitariat or the or even the creative class. And they, these people that felt betrayed, felt, out, felt outraged, but at the same time they had the hope that uh, the citizens themselves could, uh, could uh, do the work of uh, saying, no, no, representant, you don't represent us. But this is ambiguous because it's also nobody could represent us. This ambiguity was, was present all the time. And uh, this total mobilization, uh, uh, moved by, by, or impulsed by, by joyful affects, created a new, a new political paradigm, uh, as far as I see it. That is, of course it was beyond right and, and left, but not only in a tactical sense, but also because uh, right and left uh, were created because of the divisions inside the Constituent Assembly in, in the French Revolution. No? I mean a representative chamber, a representative element. And uh, that, was, uh, that wasn't uh, enough for the May 15, in the sense that the main idea is that of self-government. Self-government through the capacity of the cooperation between singularities uh, networking singularities of addressing uh, the issues of, uh, of uh, labor, welfare, uh, etc. On the basis of a certain open ecologic democracy. Ecologic in the sense of, uh, of the self-regulating uh, of an, what I have thought the Mephitin was, a, an autopoietic system. That is a system that, an open system, uh, made of subsystem, of course, which is able, on the basis of the of the of the primary elements, of transforming itself. At the same time, it is an autopoietic system, but also uh, it is not a totalizing system in the sense that in May 15 you could see it. It grows on the basis of adding up elements of society. Uh, elements of society like, uh, you know, uh, layers of uh, social uh, layers, uh, populations, uh, cultures, languages, etc. And in May 15 you could see that it began like a very cognitariat, uh, create, betrayed creative class, in a sense also movement, but it began to, to in, in, in a Con, uh, to establish a contagion of different layers through the basis of a, um, what the, the, the people like Javier Toret or comrades like Javier Toret and others have called a multi-layer system. Multi-layer in what sense? That it began through Facebook and then uh, it, uh, it colonized Twitter and, uh, it, and uh, little by little it arrived through the big media in the sense that uh, it exerted an hegemony on the big media, in the sense that they, the usual blocking of any movement that we have known in, in these uh, 15 years in the global movement and so on, this block of, of a contagion, con, con, this contagion that couldn't be made through the whole society, uh, the main uh, element or the main factor of that was the big media, because that was inaccessible. But uh, uh, on the basis of the, of the fact that the social networks and the internet in general is the basis of uh, any content and any, is the, the reference of the reality also for the big media, 
the fact that the movement, the Mayfi thing, was controlling and producing everything that was happening created a dependency on the big media. Not only because uh, they need uh, the Twitter feed, the Facebook feed, they, the, the spectators feed to you know, animate or to create a sense of reality, but also because in this very case there were like 60 assemblies in the, in the squares and a huge mobilization of almost 8 million people in the first six months that said they have said to have participated in something and it was unavoidable to talk about that. And they weren't able to lie, they weren't able to manipulate because a storm, uh, in fact, uh, um, a swarm, a swarm of attacks of, uh, you know, of tweets and, and, and phone calls and, every, and everything would block that. So uh, what we have is another kind of uh, democratic constituency. It's not anymore the, you know, the citizens that want a better representation. It is a fact that uh, representation is something that, uh, that goes beyond the, the, the paradoxes of representation. No? Like Carl Schmitt said, is the presence of an absence. No. Uh, now is the problem of uh, there is a history of the state, there is a history of capital, there is a history of the political class, and there is a history of the autonomy of the political that must be destroyed. And that is the problem in Europe. And just think of Frankfurt, just think of uh, Berlin, the chancellery, or just think of the European state system and frontier system and so on and so on. So the problem for the people was that mainly. Of course, uh, it is a very plural and heterogeneous movement, but you know, now, four years after, the only problem is how to get rid of that uh, autonomy of the political. So, uh, in these four years in Spain, uh, it's uh, something unheard of in the history of Spain, of Spain the fact that uh, for four years, uh, with, of course, up and ups and lows, there has been a continuity of the movement. You, you, don't, you can talk, you still can talk in Spain of the classical reflux problem, no? The reflux problem and then we have to accumulate forces in parliament, on, in institutions, like traditional institutions, etc. No, it's been like a renewal of, of waves, of um, mareas, of, of tides, of, uh, of that only can be explained because there is an underlying network system that keeps living the thing. In the sense that is, we could say, in this sense, not metaphorical, it's very biopolitical. Why? Because uh, what, what, ha what have been the, the, the tides, the so-called tides, the mareas? They, they have been this May 15-like mobilization in the public sector, in the welfare sector, education, uh, healthcare, uh, also in the in the in the, in the public uh, public sector. I mean the the the, the, the funcionari, uh, the public uh, servants, public servants, and even the the cops. For in the in the <laughs> in 2012, they start to mobilize through Facebook, like <laughs> like, like copycatting the the, the Mayfitin. And, and this has uh, created another physiology of the movement, in the sense that uh, there, are, there is a balance between, you know, uh, uh, fatigue, uh, delusion, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but also the living aspect of it, the, the, the experience of reappropriating life, time, cooperation, the de-individualization of, of life, no? It's something incredible for May 15 has been uh, the first, as far as I know in Spain, the first example of a mobilization uh, on the basis of individualism. I mean, the neoliberal individual was able to de-individualize through the, you know, Facebook, Twitter, which promote narcissism and, and individualism. So, to finish, uh, because how, how, <laughs> to finish, the fact is that uh, this continuity has only uh, in front of, of, of it this block of power. So Podemos is, has been, and we'll see, 
the 20th of December, has been the attempt to destroy that bloc through the very means of the autonomy of the political, I mean, through the creation of another kind of representation that was unheard of in Europe, that is pop populism. That is the idea of capturing those affects on the basis of this notion of uh, an empty signifier that identifies with a leader, Pablo Iglesias in this sense, a, a face, the power of the multitude, no? but on the basis of a delegation and a representation. I think that in politics, success commands. So, <laughs> I mean, we, I can, we can have some doubts on, on the basis of, you know, uh, theories or experiences, but to me, okay, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, but success commands. So it worked. There was this need. But I think that now we are witnessing the fact that, in a sense, for so many people, uh, on the contrary of what, uh, I don't know, Pablo or Inigo Rejón and others could believe, could have believed, uh, uh, there has been a certain fiction of this populist identification. This is that me, for instance, I don't believe it, but I say, if it works, it's okay. And I think there are so many people that have thought like that. I don't identify, I don't feel this strong aura of a Perón, of a Chavez in, in Pablo Iglesias, but if the, other, if the others believe it, I believe it too. So, but, you know, it's, it's the, the, the rule of success. But the fact is that uh, you can, and I finish, you can have that kind of device after May 15th. I think that when you have such a total mobilization of to autonomous, total mobilization of the population, you can have a, a very swift and fast operation of that kind. But in the long term, it doesn't work because it is based on delegation. It is based on of a neutralization of politics on the on the everyday life, on the, on the autonomy of, of society. But uh, we'll see. I think that uh, at least we have this municipalist uh, movement that is based on the contrary, on what we could name the, the May 15th method. You know, assemblies, cooperation, and then choosing someone, someone that works in the media. Uh, we have, I, I, think, I think that the, the, the like the specular, uh, uh, the binary uh, contrary to, to, to Pablo Iglesias is Ada Colau, which was a member of the PA, of the movement against, uh, against evictions, of, of foreclosures, of you know, people, people in debt because of the house. And it's another kind of leadership that comes from, from, from grassroots, no? And I think that this movement will be more able to solve the problems of, uh, of deblocking uh, power, of taking, seizing power, which is now the problem, and transforming it after the election. Because uh, as far as we can see now, um, the hypothesis of Podemos is not going to work in the sense of a tsunami-like victory.